In this video, I will talk about the idea of image compression. First, I will discuss uh, why image compression is required. Then I will come to the point that how image compression is even possible. So in order to understand the point that why image compression is required, suppose we can take an example of a color video of two hour duration. Okay. So we know that uh, each hour is uh, 60 minutes and each minute is 60 seconds. So the total time of the video will be around 2 into 60 into 60 seconds. Now suppose that the image uh, that is the video is changing the frame at a rate of 30 frames per second which means that the video is actually showing 30 different frames in every second. Now suppose that the frame width and height of my video is around 720 by uh, 480 pixels which means that horizontal it has 720 pixels and vertically it has 480 pixels and each of these pixels are color pixels or color uh, it is a color video so we will require three different uh, numbers or three bytes to store the pixel value of a single frame suppose that this is your video frame and you have for it uh, 720 pixels here and you have 480 pixels here so this is a color video so which means that I will have to store the uh, red channel as well as green channel as well as blue channel so each of the frame will have three different integers to store the intensity of each pixel so a single pixel at in the color image will have three different values in the uh, red green and blue channels okay. and so this is the uh, actual number of bytes so this three is the number of bytes required to store the uh, store the intensity of a single pixel so if you calculate this number this number comes around 2.24 into 10 raised to 11 that means that if you convert that into usual uh, data size representations this will be around 224 GBs and if you uh, take this number into perspective then uh, suppose that you have an 8.5 GB video then in order to store a single video you will require around 27 uh, DVDs and uh, more than that moreover uh, if you want to stream this video through Netflix or Amazon Prime then it will be taking a lot of memory from your bandwidth uh, so that it will make the viewing experience even impossible these facts shows that uh, we should have certain methods to store the signal in a compressed format rather than storing it in the original size so in order to store the image or the store the signal or as well as if you want to communicate the signal through some communication channels then there should be some method to compress the data in one end and decompress the data on the other end so that the data transmission from one end to the other end can be reduced so the communication or the storage will be more efficient so, so this is the idea uh, that we should have certain methods to compress the signal especially video or uh, image now we will look at the fundamentals of data compression which is applicable for image compression or audio compression or any uh, com compression related to any signal so uh, first of all we need to look at what is data compression data compression is the process of reducing data required to represent A given amount of information okay. data compression is the process of reducing reducing uh, data required to represent a given amount of information 
so we are talking about two different terms here one is data another one is information we may we may have used these two terms uh, interchangeably but in this definition these two terms has got its own specific meaning so data is something that we use to uh, represent an information if you can reduce the data that is required to uh, represent a given amount of information then that process is called data composition suppose that you need to store let's say some numbers like 0 1 2 3 this is these are the numbers that you need to store if if i am using an 8 bit representation so this number will be 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and the second number would be 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 then i have 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 then the last one will be 1 1 so this can be data and this can be an information so information is the same 0 1 2 3 and i am using this data to store the, this in, for specific information now suppose that if i am using another data to store the same information let's say so you can see that you are storing on numbers only from 0 to 3 and you are quite sure that uh, the number will not go beyond these uh, three numbers these four numbers then there is no need of using uh, these many bits to store the data information so what i can do instead is uh, i can just to just use two bits to store this information so 0, 0, 0, 0001011 1, 0, 1, 1. so, okay so this is another data that is used to store this information so you can see that if you have used uh, 8 bits here to store a specific number here i'm just using uh, two extra zeros i mean two zeros only that means i'm storing only with two bits that represent that i don't need these many six bits extra to store my information i can do it with uh, two bits only so actually what i'm doing is i'm storing the same information but uh, using two different kind of data representation so what I'm, if i do if i go to the uh, uh, in terms of uh, compression i can actually compress this data into this form that makes the amount of data required to store this information okay and one term that commonly used to measure the effectiveness of data compression is the compression ratio so this b uh, you can take uh, this b as the number of bits before compression and this b dash can be taken as number of bits after compression okay i am using this before and after to get an uh, idea about what compression ratio is uh, giving us this cannot be before or after it can be just uh, two different times so b represent the number of bits in one format and b dash represent gives the uh, number of bits in another format so that doesn't mean that this should be always before and after it can be other way around also but uh, i'm using this terminologies to give an idea about uh, the compression ratio in an easy way suppose that if i'm saying that uh, this compression ratio c is actually uh, 10 by 1 or it is uh, 10 is to 1 then what it represents is one bit is enough to store 10 bits of the uncompressed data right so what means this means that after compression i just need one bit to store the same amount of information before compression it was 10 bits okay that means that uh, one bit or in other words 10 bits uh, can be replaced just by one bit uh, if you take the this example you can see that eight bits can be replaced only by two bits okay so you can see that these numbers these six bits are not actually required to store this information okay so you can say that these six bits are actually redundant okay 
so what we will do is actually if there is some redundant data in the information then we can utilize that redundant data or we can exploit that redundant data to make the data shorter uh, that makes the compression possible so in order to uh, measure how many data are redundant in a particular representation we will usually use the term relative data redundancy so relative data redundancy is given by the equation r is equal to 1 minus 1 by c where c is the compression ratio that we have discussed before so suppose that if for the same case for example if i have c is equal to 10 by 1 or 10 is to 1 then i will calculate the value of r as 1 minus 1 by 10 by 1 or it is equal to 1 minus 1 by 10 or it is equal to 0.9 so this number 0.9 if I convert that into percentage then this will be around 9 it will be 90 percentage that means that before compression 90 percentage of the data was redundant and after compression we can just represent by using a single bit where it was actually represented by using 10 bits before compression which means that in the previous representation 90 percentage of data was redundant or which was actually unwanted okay so these are the two uh, major terms that we need to uh, discuss uh, while discussing the uh, topics related to data compression so compression is the process of reducing the data required to represent the given amount of information so you have to understand the difference between data as well as information data is the way of representing certain information so we, i can have several kind of representation so data compression means we just want to get the minimum amount of data to represent an information and compression ratio is the ratio of number of bits in one format to the number of bits in another format or in another way of representation to get the uh, idea into perspective uh, you can use the b as number of bits before compression and b dash as number of bits after compression so if i say c is equal to uh, 10 by 1 or if i say c equal to 10 is to 1 then you have to understand that one bit is enough to store 10 bits that was used in uh, in a format before compression. relative data redundancy is giving us what percentage of the data was uh, redundant or it was actually unwanted so we are finding that number using this equation that is r is equal to 1 minus 1 by c which is equal to 1 minus 1 by 10 or 0.9 if i convert that into percentage it is 90 percentage that means that 90 percentage of the data used before compression was actually unwanted so we can exploit that unwanted data to make the uh, data representation shorter that makes the conversion uh, that makes the compression process possible now we will look at uh, what are different types of data redundancies or we will ans answer the question how data compression can be done okay so there are three different types of uh, data redundancies the first one is coding redundancy coding redundancy okay. in order to explain the coding redundancy I have taken an image and uh, its histogram values so I will come to that point so if you look at this image this image has only four different intensity values I have these lines uh, with, with an intensity of 255 and I have this star with an intensity of 186 then I have the background, the major background, the gray shade of intensity of 180, 128. Then there is a dark region with an intensity of 87. So this image consists of only these four intensity values and no other intensity values are present in this image. So those are the values that I have listed under the value R subscript K. Then if you look at the probability of those intensities in the image, you can see that 25 percentage of the intensity values are of value 87 47 percentage are of value 128 that is the major share in this image that is this gray shade then i have a very uh, little value of uh, 255 that is a complete whitish 
region with only 0.03 percentage this is actually the probability and you can see that all other values except these four intensity values has got a contribution of zero percentage now suppose that if I am using an 8-bit code or the usual byte representation in order to represent each of these intensity values then I will be consuming 8 different bytes in order to store the image uh, of this kind. Now if I map this 87 number 87 value to a representation or the data representation of 0 1 and the 128 value with the data representation of 1 and this uh, 186 value to a data representation of 000 and 255 value with the data representation of uh, 001 then you can see that the, this uh, 01 is taking only 2 bits length and this is taking only 1 bit this one is taking only 3 and this one is taking only 3 bits so before it was we were consuming 8 bits to store each uh, intensity values now we are taking different length bits in order to store the uh, intensity values now imagine that this image uh, this image uh, is a uh, let's say uh, a 100 by 100 image then each of these intensity values are represented by 8 bits then you can say that I will be consuming this much of data which means that I will be consuming 100 into 100 into 8 bits of data in order to store this image now on other words if I am taking only 2 1 3 3 length bits to store my image then you can see that this uh, 2 is I mean 25 percentage of the data is taken by this 2 so you can do the math 0 0.25 into 2 plus 0.47 into 1 plus 0.25 into 3 plus 0 0.03 into 3 so if you do this calculation you can see that only 1.8 Eight one bits will be used to store a single uh, intensity. Okay, or in other words, if I have a hundred by hundred image, if I have a hundred by hundred image, and if I multiply this one with one point eight one, this much space will be utilized in the computer memory in order to store this number. So you can see that it is this is approximately more than uh, four times the space required to store an image with this kind of representation. So that is how we can uh, make use of the coding redundancy in order to compress an image where we will be shortening the number of bits used to store a intensity value in the image so that we can make the image compression more efficient. Well, this is one way of doing image compression and the second one is the second type of redundancy is called the spatial redundancy or temporal redundancy in spatial or temporal redundancy what we are looking at is we are looking at a pattern in the spatial domain so for example if you consider this image you can see that we have several horizontal strips of line where the intensity value does not change in a single line and this is applicable for all lines that you can see in this image so imagine that if I have let's say a hundred pixels horizontally then if I am using eight bits to store uh, each of those pixels then I will be consuming around 100 into 8 800 pixels 800 uh, bits to store a single line in other words imagine that if the intensity value of this particular the first line is let's say 5 that is the intensity value then I am making a coding convention that whatever number I write next that will be the uh, length of that line or 
in how many pixels that number is going to repeat. So if I write 5 comma 100, what does this represent? That is the intensity 5 is representing in the coming 100 pixels. So that is one way of writing. For example, if you suppose that the next line has a got an intensity, let's say 255. And, uh, and suppose that I have a, uh, suppose that I have a, again the complete line is represented by uh, 255 value intensity and that also uh, lasts for a duration of 100 pixels. Then from only from this data I can interpolate or I can uh, recover the entire line. So if you look at this one, 5 comma 100 means I have a back line of 100 pixels, 255 comma 100 means I have a uh, white line of 100 pixels. So uh, rather than having 100 into 8 plus 100 into 8, that is around 1600 bits to store two lines. Suppose that if I am using an 8 bit for this one, 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 that gives us a value 32 bits. Okay, And this gives us a value 1600 bits. So you can uh, directly see that there is a reduced amount of data to store the same value of information or same amount of information. So this is how we make use of temporal or spatial redundancy in an image. The third type of data redundancy is irrelevant information. So in order to explain the idea of irrelevant information, you just look at this image. This image has got a grayish uh, color all over the image and if you look at the histogram, this is the histogram of that image. So you can see that the major contribution to this image comes from a intensity level or a gray level that is uh, between the complete darkness and complete brightness. Well, let's say that intensity value is 128. But this image also got some intensity values like 129 or 120 or 130. That is that you can see that we have one intensity at top then some contribution from the adjacent intensity values are also present in this image and I can go to the other side also I can have intensity values like 127 or 126 but if the application allows us to have only one intensity for example if, we, if this is for some human visualization or for human for some human uh, inference for a general purpose application then by getting all this intensity value in this particular image will not make any significant difference for a viewer even though if i represent this entire image only with one intensity value 128 that doesn't make any difference to the viewer as far as this image is concerned and even though if i include this one that does not make any change to the viewers uh, interpretation from this image so in irrelevant information what we are doing is we will be just neglecting the information that are not relevant or that does not serve any purpose. So I will be in this particular example I will be going for representing this entire image by using a single intensity value 128. And in some applications if you want to preserve the histogram like this or if you want to have uh, those small intensity values in this image then we will not be able to exploit the irrelevant information from that image. So if the application allows us to have the irrelevant information removed then that will be uh, helpful for us to exploit for data compression. So this is the idea of irrelevant information. I hope this is clear. Thank you very much.